Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Who we got here? Dan got Steve Anthony. Burr and stand-up comedian Sullivan and the Sun. I think was the name of them. Yeah, doesn't show. matter. Okay. I don't. Was it Sun or Sons? Sun. Yeah. Sun. Just one Sun. Just one. Just only no. had the one. It would be great if we called it Sons and we never addressed that. There's no other Sun. <laughs> yeah, the only one that at one. all. Yeah. That's like what that. I do. I've got yeah. two Sons, but I only address one. Yeah. I don't want the other one the to get a big it. head about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, man. Because you don't, he's a baby. You don't know if he's going to turn out to be an asshole yet. Yeah, he's 11 months and he's already throwing shit at me. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, man, ease up. And if he turns out to be an asshole, you could just leave him in the woods. Yeah, womb to woods is what yeah. they do in China, yeah. brother. Speaking of China, where are you from in China? I'm so <laughs> uh, Yeah. No, but that is true. There is a cutoff period where he's still a baby, right? So you could still wrap him up and put him at the fire station. At the fire, or, yeah. yeah. Or like the library. That's, yeah. that's why we, 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 do a lot of, basket. we do a lot yeah. of charity for fire departments for that reason, just in case I ever have to dump a baby out there. I won't feel bad about it. Yeah, Dan never pulls out, by the I way. I don't know. I haven't. What? He's in it to win it. A long time. A long time. It's a long been a time. while. Only dates women who might kill him as well. Yeah. That's uh, fun nice. Facts. That's yeah. good. Look. Yeah. So you, you, you so you were learning. Your brother was in the military. He was an infantry guy. In the Let's not change the subject. Yeah, well, let's I'm, not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting into this. So yeah, okay. you know how it is. Infantry dudes weren't used to a certain level of psychotic, psychotic behavior. Yeah. yeah. And when that goes away, it becomes problematic for us. So I just find that in other places. That's all I'm doing. So that's why all he's not, doing. Why not sleep with it? Yeah, replacing yeah. one with the other, you know? <laughs> oh, that's what I'm doing, guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm banging women that fake pregnancies and try to stab me and shit. Yeah, the last one that's faked good. a pregnancy. That's and good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just think life is really boring. And then she got engaged, and then she re-emailed you back and said, hey, guess what? No. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, she got hitched and, or got engaged and still wants to hang? Yes. She... No, I, I don't know. I didn't answer. Nobody throws yeah. out an email like that. I don't know what she was after that time. Because you've already blocked her on all your cells. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I'd say what she's after. <laughs> that paper, hombre. That's all she's about. This isn't about Dan. This is about you. Welcome to Wilmington, North Carolina. <laughs> Great to be here. Steve, yeah. yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever played uh, Dead Crow Comedy Club? I did where you're Dead Crow maybe two years ago. Maybe two and a half, something like that. Yeah, it's been a bit. But nice. I, I like the room. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is nice, yeah. isn't it? How, yeah. how about people in the South, though? I like people in the South. I don't have any problem with people in the South. I don't, I don't have any do they ask you, in New York. Did they ask you where you're from a lot? Like you just did like an asshole? No, I don't get that a lot. What are no, you? I don't guy? really Because you're half, that. right? You're half Irish. Half Korean and Irish. No, yeah. but he's, all, he's American, though. Yeah, you're all American. That's right. Right. That's right. If That's, you would, but if you had to pick one, Korean or Irish, like gun to head, which one would you go with? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. It's so difficult because they are very similar. They sound very different, but the Koreans are like the Irish of the Asians. They're very outgoing. They're the partiers. Really? Um, Koreans and Irish both love cabbage, both love potatoes, <laughs> both love yeah. whiskey, and they both hate the sun. So it's like there's very similar traits they, in all I'm of I'm sorry. Them. Koreans hate the sun. Oh, Asians in general hate the sun. Like yeah. they're afraid of it or they're fair-skinned? Well, yeah, you... because there's still like that caste system like in China and Japan. Or, like like mentality oh, I see. of yeah, like yeah. if you're in the sun, if you have a tan, then you're a worker yeah, because yeah. you're a worker. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. Really? Interesting. Yeah. And that's, still, like that's that. still like in the mentality there. Oh, God, crazy. yeah, yeah. That's why like in Los Angeles to see all the Asians, they, they wear white gloves when they drive. They have the visors, huge visors on all the time. So wow. It's, it's, I love when they drive. You know what? His wife, <laughs> <laughs> his wife thinks that recycling makes America look poor, so she's yes. anti-recycling. So that's kind of similar, right? Yeah, because that's, that's the same I mean, thing. That is kind of similar, yeah. But. <laughs> it is, and it's like we're a rich country. I don't need to deal with that bullshit of like – yeah. Blue, I, I didn't pay all the money for my house to have a fucking blue can in front of it once a week. No. You know? Right. It's, a, it's an eyesore. Goddamn, yeah. It's an eyesore. Look. You, it's an you know, eyesore. You'll be gone. Two or three generations will have passed after your death before the earth implodes or whatever happens. So who yeah. gives a shit at that point? Well, you think my, be, my yeah. third great-grandfather gave two shits about me? No, no. he was... Probably owning other human beings at that point. He well, had bigger problems. Dan, <laughs> he, was, he was up north, so. <laughs> you didn't answer the question, though. Gun to head. Pick one. Pick a race. Oh, pick a race. You're asking I him to pick between his mom I, and his dad. I guess I choose Korean because, because there's... <laughs> because I guess... Diversity is such a big thing now. You got to be like, oh fuck! I guess we got enough yeah. Irish. It would be a lot. It would be so. a lot easier for the for you to get into college at this point if you were mm -hmm. only Korean. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or anything. And also, the Koreans yeah. never almost starved to death because potatoes didn't grow. 
That's, that's true. true. That's Which true. seems famine, like yeah. like you're in an island, maybe just fish. But the whole North Korea thing. Uh, yeah. Are you a North or South guy? <laughs> you know that? <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of the South. Um, <laughs> you know, that guy's. Can you imagine? He's fucking crazy. <laughs> Some guy. Yeah. Oh, that dude. I would love to meet him. I yeah, swear I, to God. I would too. I would um, like. People ask me what my dream dinner guest is, and I'm like, fucking Kim, Kim Jong Un. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Casey Anthony, Kim Jong-un, and who's your, <laughs> your third is, is the juice. Yeah, so it's the, the juice. town bananas. Yeah. I want, I, those are the three people I want at dinner with me. Like, fuck Einstein and all these guys. I don't care about any of that shit. Yeah. Give you me know, you're speaking so over your head, but Casey yeah, Anthony. Like, it's like, Casey I Anthony. I, I, yeah. I've, you do it for the funnies. And she's also single, so. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, she knows how to deal with problems. Right? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> not, a lot of, not a lot of extra trunk space. But no, no, no. That's why we didn't take her car tonight. Um, Steve, you're welcome for all of this. Uh, what's Let's your stance on down. women voting? Because we're against it on here. I'm kidding. Uh, um, yeah. We're yeah. just firing away like the worst <laughs> shit on the planet to start with. Um, I'm, I, this so this I'm, po- podcast is called Career Ending, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's Oof. great to be here, and I'm going to end my it's career the here. End yeah. Of it. yeah. It's Where's the, the end part of where it. we talk about how much we love Schindler's List? Like, oh, it's man. our favorite movie, That's right? at the okay, end. Okay, we're going to kill at the our end. careers here. Yeah. <laughs> we get all gassed up and talk about that at the you end. You do a bit on that, too, though. How there should be no other Holocaust movies after, because that was the best. After Schindler, yeah. It was, like, like, it was no one more. of the best movies of all time, not just Holocaust movies. But they keep movies. pumping them out, like oh, yeah? the boy yes. in striped pajamas, yes. and all this stuff. Same with slavery like, movies. Enough, we yeah. get it. Same with slavery movies, where I think, and this is, this is a true statement, by the way. Yeah. I think... As a, as a young filmmaker, mm-hmm. there's, there's three types of movies you can make that, that will prove to everybody that you're serious. And you're trying right. to get an Oscar. Slave too, movies, yeah. Holocaust yeah. movies, or... Retard. No, PTSD. PTSD. Oh, yeah. For, so, for soldiers, yeah, where yeah. it's just like, oh, Or man. retard movies, yeah. But I mean, you can't even say retard, but what is, uh, what's the Well, proper? we've all said it. Yeah, we've all... Like all within the last 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Actually, you two did. I did not say retard. Um, so <laughs> retard. I kind of keep it cash, like it's, uh, like it's a flame re- retard. Retard. Re- retard. <laughs> yeah. situation. That way I can't be judged. Um, <laughs> but I feel like in L.A., that was the most thing, like... You know, when you first start off there and you were looking in Backstage West or whatever, it was like, it's going to be true, an extra yeah. in my Holocaust short film. And you're like, oh, here we go. God. Really? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Jesus Christ. Or the PTSD. Dude. You used to get that all the time. Come play as a, a soldier in my thing. You'd go and lie up in Runyon Canyon, you know? Lie down. Right, right. Yeah, and Reenact yeah. the war things. <laughs> yeah. Somebody would throw dirt right around you like a, like a bullet or a bomb was going off and you, you know. Ah. The, the ringing in your ears yeah, and, yeah, yeah. the yeah. whole thing yeah it's so yeah. stupid flashback flashback flashback, <laughs> flashback I'm actually in the middle of a flashback right now but I'm very good at managing it what, what um, from your fucking ex-girlfriend no from uh, Vietnam yeah from Nam from, from Nam he was Nam yeah. 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 uh, this, this guy no uh, I was I was <laughs> reasoning through Jesus your Christ. Wikipedia by the way because mm. um, we do we do wik- Wikipedia research on every guest <laughs> Only Wikipedia okay. research. Yep. Um, so everything we're going to ask you is based off of Wikipedia. Strictly Pedia. Well, can I tell you before you get in this Wikipedia, that's usually the go-to, like every morning radio you go to. Yeah. And I'll forget one of my favorite things was I did a radio show in Nashville, Tennessee with Colin Jost, who's on Weekend mm-hmm. Update. He's funny. And this, this host, whatever, the, he was fucking flipping over the fact that he had Colin Jost in the studio. She's like, Colin, you went to Harvard. You, uh... You were for the National Lampoon. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. So Colin's obliging. And he goes, man, then you went to write at SNL right out of Harvard. Please tell me about that. So Colin, of course, is telling some stories. And he goes, and then you became head writer at SNL, and you're on Weekend Update. I mean, this is great. It's so great to have you. Please tell me about that. And he tells him about it. He goes, and Steve, you're Mexican, right? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> are you, no, I'm, are you I'm fucking so, Mexican? Somebody now. slipped Mexican into your fucking Wikipedia? I, I don't know all? what, but he said, I thought I read that online. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't even look. No, I'm not Mexican. Eh. Like he did all this research on Colin. Yeah. He didn't give a fine fuck about me. It's <laughs> the worst, isn't it? Yeah. Because if, yeah. if a plane goes down, it would be Colin Jost and the Mexican. Yeah, 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 Mexi- yeah. Mexican Died comedian the Steve Crash. laborer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the, please donate a rake to his family. Um, <laughs> no, but this this was one of the funnier ones that I've read, and I don't know if okay. you did it or someone else did it. I don't um, know. You're a diehard fan. Steve is also a diehard fan of the English band Oasis. That is. Oh, true. that's true. Yeah, I've seen that huge, is true. Yes, huge Oasis fan. Are you name two songs other than Champagne Supernova and Wonderwall? Oh, Stop crying your heart out. Uh, 
you know, there's so many. Lila, uh, Holy, Holy Mountain is Noel Gallagher's new stuff. I mean, I every so this one is of real. Them. I know, I know every album. I've, I've seen them in concert. Here, I'll play you something. Last night, I went to. Are I you go still to an Irish pub. kidding? Right? Are you still bootlegging their shit or what? I go to an Irish pub and I hijack. Let's see where. In oh. town last night. This is. Here we go. <laughs> Stop it. Is that you singing? I got the whole bar singing. Singing Wonderwall, Wonderwall last yeah. night. Oh my gosh. That's good. But I, I, I know all the I know all the B sides. I have every single released. I have all the That's really fun. Have, have, have you met them? I met them years ago. I was I was just like maybe like twenty three or something like that. I was a comic in New York and I flew to Vegas to go see them at the hard rock at the joint. And I was on the same flight as them because I flew from L New York to L.A., then L.A. to Vegas. And, and from the L.A. to Vegas trip, they were on the same flight. So me and my girlfriend at the time were on the same flight. I was like, holy fuck, that's fucking away. They're in, they're in first class and shit. It was, it was awesome. And, um, and at the gate, I got a picture with Noel. And I went up to Noel and I was like, hey, could I get a picture with you? He goes, and you just, he didn't even look at me. He goes, let's get it over with. And he stands up and we take the picture. And I was like, it's classic Noel. It's like, all right, this is kind of cool, right? <laughs> but I thought the opposite. I, so Liam's at baggage claim with the other band mates. And I was like, I was like, I got to get a picture with Liam. So I go over and I'm like, Liam, can I get a picture? He's like, fucking yeah, you can I get a picture. And he starts talking to me. He's like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a comedian in New York City. And he just starts talking to me for 10 minutes about stand-up comedy and how much he loves it and how he no wishes he could have done it. And for 10 minutes, I was just sitting there. I was like, this is fucking great. And then I went to that show, and years later, I had read at that show, my second favorite band is The Killers, and The Killers... Uh, they're, they're amazing. Brandon Flowers yeah. and Dave Kooning, I think, were at that concert, and that's when they kind of were like, all right, we're going to form a band now. At that show. At that show. Wow. So I have my ticket stub, and it's kind of like cool to know my two favorite bands somehow merge that night. That's that amazing. I, so so my, this is your rosebud. This is like the only reason you got into comedy was so you could meet... Liam and Noel. Yeah. 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 I, I, saw, I saw them in Los Angeles at the Hollywood Bowl. Yep. They fucking hated each other, and it was really evident when Apparent, they came out yeah. on stage. They were obligated to do an hour, and right. they did one hour and one minute. <laughs> They're as fucking out. As soon as, at Hollywood Bowl, yeah. which you've paid you know, a, a jillion dollars sure. for. Uh, you know, you go to the little grocery store and buy wine for your wife and the whole fucking thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> they play for one hour, one minute. Uh, no I think it was core. Liam was holding a, a Heineken and yeah. he just smashes it on stage and walks off. Good night. That, that was it. Yeah. And I was like, fuck these guys. After that, I was like, fuck they these guys. They are kind of like live performance wise. They're awful. They're not. They weren't. They were never a fun band to watch live because they're just there to play the songs. That's they were why good. They just play. Yeah, they were good. They, there was no. No energy. No they're not. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Didn't but like Brandon Flowers is the complete opposite. He's there to put on a show. And he's running around. He's and amazing. It's great. Yeah. He's amazing. Uh, I want to go over these movies because two of these are, are, are my faves. Okay. I, actually, three of them are. Okay. And again, because like, on my Wikipedia, I don't know who wrote it. Sure. So like, I'm always curious like if it was you or, or this shit is real. Because uh, you got Superman on here. I'm, I'm yeah, that was the first movie I ever saw. Reeves, right? Yeah, Real Christopher okay. Reeves. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because um, if you had said other, I would have been really pissed off about it. <laughs> no. Swingers. The fourth one. The, the, the suckiest one. Swingers. Swingers. I fucking love that movie. It was same. one of the first like independent films. Because I think we're, we're maybe all the same age. So mm -hmm. we were there for like the start of Miramax and all yeah. these cool kind of independent films. Ben Affleck. And, and yeah, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Matt Damon. And Owen Wilson with... Oh, Bottle, Rocket. Bottle Rocket. Yeah. Um, yeah, all these great kind of Miramax films. And then Swingers came out. And I don't know anything about Los Angeles. I'm in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember reading about this funny film. And the, my college girlfriend, her friend was going to Lake Forest University, which is the town that Vince Vaughn's from. So at the time, I was like, I read about this film. We got to go see it. It's playing at this theater here. And the only reason it was playing is because Vince is from there. I, I had no idea. And I went and saw this movie. I was like, holy shit. This is the fucking funniest thing mm -hmm. I've ever seen. And it was just like, that's every guy and their friends. Yeah. When it came out, we used to put the VHS in all the time. We'd watch it before we'd go drinking. And then we'd go hit the bars that night. It was kind of like part of our pregame. And I never in a million years ever would have thought that I'd be like not only friends with Vince, but like, like literally playing NHL and with he, Vince he, at his place. he was the producer and on your TV show, right? On the show and yeah. then this, this feature film that's coming out. But, um, but he is like when it's happening, 
on screen, it's fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. But when it's you, you're fucking furious. And that's the thing I never realized is he talks so much shit. He's so competitive. And he makes you feel <laughs> like the worst human being. You're talking about when you're playing world. video games against Oh, his God. Asshole. He's super competitive. That's yeah. great. And he'll, take, he'll fucking take really creative jibes at you. He's, he's, he's so much fun to play with. Yeah. But it, it's, it, you, your blood will boil. You're you know like, he drives the purple this, Trans Am, right? Does he still have the purple Trans Am? He does. He has a um, he has a classic car. I forget what kind it is, but it's a black car. He got rid of that Trans Am, and I remember one of the first times I <laughs> I was going over to hang out with him. I was going over to Peter Billingsley's house, and for for like a year, I never even put t- two and two together. Peter Billingsley was from a Christmas story. Yeah, yeah. He was just he was a cool guy. I had no fucking idea. And then I go over to hang out, and Vince's chain smoking he's in socks and like boxers and he's playing fucking video games and just like classic bachelor and then we go to get something to eat and he's like let's get my car and we go down and it's the this purple trans air fucking dirty (laughs) had not been washed for like months i was like that's your fucking car it's like i did not expect that and then you slowly he's just like a classic bachelor like he just yeah not but he had like a tape he used to have tapes in it that played jazz or like some form of big band, like Sinatra. He loves or, swing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, big swing right. guy. Yeah, but um, huge country fan, like old classic country. That's his, yeah, like Waylon Jennings, and yeah, that's his jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's constantly playing that stuff all the time. Uh, True Romance is on here. The, I think, like, literally one of my favorite. I, I hadn't, I, because like Oasis, I listened to it so much. I'm like, I gotta stay away from it. Yeah, because then I'll appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. And True Romance, I was just like, I've seen it so many times. I took some time away. And then I watched it recently on a plane. I was like, fuck. I mean, what a great fucking movie. And just classic, like, Tarantino dialogue in there. And yeah. just all those little eccentricities that he, that he puts in it. Was, I, I fucking love that movie. Especially Rappaport was on the show, and we had him talk about Chimera oh, Man. Dick Ritchie? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Did it's he great. have some great stories? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, some off camera, we were just like, hey, man. Speaking of talking shit. Yeah. That guy never stops, man. Holy He's great. I'd like, to, yeah. I'd like to see him and Vince get in the room together and just have like a rap battle or some shit. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? <laughs> uh, guys, guys. Uh, and then the last one, MacGruber, is one of my end-all be-alls. Yeah, yeah. Is that true, too? That is true. Okay. God. I've watched MacGruber. I hate that movie. 438 <laughs> you times. It? It's just stupid as shit. It's Dan, you're so bad, but it's so fucking... I mean, just <laughs> it's Forte. Forte is like one of those guys, I think. But Forte is a really good actor, though. He's a great actor, but he's one of those guys like Bill Murray, where the minute I see him on screen, it's just like, I'm in. Whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever you Same. do, I am absolutely in. Same, yeah. I have this great Forte story that uh, Colin Jost told me that, <laughs> that they're all like, I guess, in an office talking or whatever. And then Forte leaves the room and he comes back in. And he's holding a potted plant, and he's holding it, and he's just pissing in it. And they go, Will, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Why are you pissing in the plant? He goes, well, the farts were not getting the attention I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> he's just been farting, and people are just accepting of it, just forte. But it's just like, it's so crazy. There it is. He's one of my favorites. He's super underappreciated. Like, Dan hates me. No, I, I, oh, love, like... I love Will Forte. I just don't think that movie's... Uh, it's, you're you're out of your mind, I, I dude. Can't yeah, do it. even, out of even your the sketches. Mind. Go back and watch the Barkley um, racial racial like HR thing <laughs> where yeah, yeah, yeah. has to go to HR. It's so fucking. He's funny. great. I love him. Yeah, he's really funny. Was that was that ever a dream of being on SNL? No, I I I, I you know as a comic in New York City. You know, I guess you kind of think about it, but I was <laughs> I had a I've got a horrible SNL story. So so. I was maybe 25. I, I definitely should not have turned in basically an audition tape. And what you do is you turn in a tape first mm-hmm. if they like you or if they go see you at certain like second city in Chicago, then they invite you to the audition, right? So I was a young comic in New York and I was married, managed by Barry Katz who repped like Huge. everybody yeah. on, on the show at the time. And so he's like, you should turn in a tape. So it's like three impressions, three original characters. So what I did was... This is years ago when, like, we don't have the access like we do with the yeah. films now and editing and all that stuff. And so Robert Kelly, who's a popular, like, seller comic, he's a really tech-savvy guy. He lends me his camera. So I set it up. I record myself. And I'm just letting it go for an hour, just, like, doing the character over and over again, just no, no stopping, starting, just letting it go. 
So I take it to my buddy's place. We edit it. I turn it in and I give the camera back to Bobby Kelly. And I go, hey, I bought a six pack of tapes and the tape is still in there. So feel free to record over it. And here's five more. Huge fucking mistake. (laughs) So Bobby Kelly takes the tape and edits together the worst parts of my audition. And Patrice O'Neill had a roast. They were, they were roasting Patrice yeah, O'Neill at the Boston one. Comedy Club. That was Club. a great one. And it's all, everybody in New York's there. I'm talking fucking everybody. Comics that are on SNL, all the seller comics, like everybody's there. Just and that night, Schumer, I happened yeah. to be emceeing at the Comedy Cellar, so I couldn't go over. So Bobby Kelly, instead of doing like roast bits, he fucking brings out a TV, a VCR, pops the VCR tape in, and... Starts playing my audition tape, but the worst for the audience. For the audience. Oh my god! So Geraldo, (sighs) Colin Quinn, like Patrice, they're all Norton. Everybody's there. They're like, dude, this is fucking awful. No one's even laughing. It's so bad. And Colin Quinn goes, dude, you gotta stop. This is this is this is just awful. And he went over. And Colin Quinn, I think, is the one that stopped it. And Bill Burr. For years Holy said that's the meanest shit. thing I've ever seen in New York City <laughs> from all the comics. So that <laughs> night, all the comics are coming back to the cellar, and they're not even looking at me. They won't even look at me. They're like they embarrassed. Feel so, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. They I, so I feel awful hearing this yeah. story. Like, I'm starting to sweat hearing this story. And people Holy are looking shit. at me. I'm like, what's, what's, how was the roast? And they're like, oh, uh, they couldn't even tell me the story. And then I think Bill Burr is the one that broke it to me. He's like, dude, I, dude come here. I got to tell you something. I was like, what? He's like, dude. <laughs> You got to talk to Bobby, and I was like, "Oh fuck, man, it was it was bad." So what happened when you talked to Bobby? Bobby I would have fucking lost it for years. He didn't give a shit. He thought it was funny, and he's like, "That's the disconnect sometimes with Bobby." And then eventually, he fucking copped up to it. Like it took like I think two or three years for people to constantly bring it up to him and go, "That was fucked up, man." Holy shit! I I would never have gotten over that. Are you surprised at all to hear that Bobby Kelly is tech savvy? I would not have thought Very that. Very tech savvy. Yeah. Tech like, savvy one, two. Like that. That's one of the craziest fucking stories I've ever heard. Like, but I, I would hate somebody for the like. like I would all have those guys have a them. tinge of like meanness in them. I, oh I, yeah. I'll never forget. I was. Uh, I used to play uh, roller hockey all the time in Central Park, and someone snapped my stick. So I'm just rollerblading back home, and I lived in Hell's Kitchen. And Bobby Kelly and Jim Norton lives lived in Hell's Kitchen too at the time. <laughs> I'm skating down. I see him walk out of Starbucks, and they see me in rollerblades, and they're fucking howling. Yeah, that's, they're, like, they're thinking mm. I'm just rollerblading, <laughs> and I skate in between them. I'll never forget this, and I just smacked their coffees out <laughs> yeah. of their hands, and they were fucking dying laughing because right. they think that that's funny because they're just so fucking they're assholes. Yeah, <laughs> fucking assholes. Look, but, uh, Jim Norton has a book called "I Hate Your Fucking Guts," so I'm pretty sure he's accepted the fact that he's well, an asshole. Well, here's the thing: yeah. if, if, so, if you would have told me this story and you would have said, "Hey, it's Jim Norton who did this," I, I, Jim Norton, yes, I would, I, I would be like, "Oh yeah, that guy's a piece of shit." Of course he did. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> Kelly is surprising. Where it's like, I watched him on was it Dane Cook's documentary? Yeah, on, yeah, on HBO where it was just like he was Torgasm. struggling, 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 struggling. Yeah, and he, that show kind of nuked Dane Cook. Yeah. After that, right? And it, yeah. Bobby Kelly did not come off great on that either. And it was I don't just think like, any of them did. No. To be and, honest, and, except for Goldman, maybe. I like, yes, I love Gary. Correct. Yeah, because yeah. he was like the nicest guy ever. And <laughs> he got a bunch of opportunities after that. Yeah. The rest of them, you were like, I fucking hate these guys. I'm surprised he did that after that show. Or was it before? Yeah, it was, it was definitely before it. But Bob, like, I, I known Bobby for years. I love Bobby. Bobby's a great guy. He really is a great guy. But he, he doesn't, sometimes the line is a little further down the line than for some people. And like, like Norton, Norton, I think, is one of the most gifted comics out of the cellar. He's he, really he, funny. I mean, if you just listen to his, the subject matter to me is like, whoa. But the honesty and then the joke telling and the crass of the jokes, I, I always kind of looked up to him and Burr when I was starting. And Geraldo, I would say. And Patrice's honesty as well. Just it, it was like a great time to be a young comic. Like if I was a freshman, those guys are like the seniors. Sure. I yeah. definitely Burr was maybe like a junior. Um, but I, I looked up to those guys. What's it like now uh, with the uh, outrage Olympics going on all the time? Oh, God. I yeah, mean, I mean, I, it's, it's true. Because like right now, being a stand-up comic has got to be the fucking yeah. worst. I mean, I watched Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. The new season came out a couple of days ago, right? Yeah. Uh, Seinfeld's dream guest was Eddie Murphy sure. and the, both of them were debating over ho- like a homeless joke yeah. which fucking two three years ago you wouldn't give a shit about no, God, a homeless no, no. joke now they're like man is this funny 
to hear Eddie Murphy and Jerry Seinfeld or, or, or argue over whether or not a homeless joke is funny, I was like, right. that's where we're at? I think 98% of comics, you got to remember though, Eddie Murphy is a little bit removed from the scene mm. yeah. where he's contemplating coming back into it. So I think, well, you know. Well, Netflix made him an offer, right? 70 yeah. million? It's like, it's fucking 70 million. crazy. Well, Chappelle got 20 per well, show. He got yeah. 60, yeah. Three, yeah. 60 total, 20 per show. And it's like, yeah. Yes, you're goddamn right. Eddie's going to come Eddie, back for seventy from what million I heard, at some point. From what I heard, Eddie didn't want to do the work. He doesn't want to go on the road for a year and build his. He hour. said it though, but he said it in the in, on Jerry Seinfeld's thing. He said, "I don't want to do." The, he's like, "Man, what you guys are doing and doing the work, I don't want to do the fucking work." Knowing what you know now and yeah. how the climate we're in, how easy is your job every fucking night? Well, the job's easy because. People understand. I think most people understand when they come into a comic club. And ninety nine percent of comics, except for like Judd Apatow, is are like, yeah, you can talk about whatever you want. Why? You know? Why Judd Apatow? Let me ask you that. He's he's coming out. You know, like I forget what article it was, but he was, I think, a Hollywood Reporter or something saying that you know comics should be mindful. It's like fuck off. That's right. I, you, remember, I read there, that. Yeah. No, the. Co- it's the one form, it's the one, it's like the last vessel of free speech, period. Yeah. And that's so true. that's why this new hour I'm working on, that's why I'm at the clubs, I'm working, and Eddie knows what it takes to do it. Oh, so yeah. you got to yeah. get, you got to go to the clubs, you got to grind. And so the whole set I'm doing is like, I'm doing a talk show, but I'm the only one on the talk show. So you do monologue, panel, then stand up. So it's three different styles of writing. So aesthetically, it looks different, but the whole hour is like a trap so i'm baiting the the audience with with material to get them to groan and then at the end of the show i reveal why you shouldn't groan and i go on this kind of tirade about like what stand-up means to the freedom of speech and what it means to this country and how things are getting out of hand and et cetera, et cetera. So I think I've, I've seen comics take an approach where they address it in their act, mm-hmm. but I've never mm-hmm. seen a whole hour dedicated to setting a trap, getting them yeah, to yeah. take the bait, and then you explain why you shouldn't take the bait. Well, it's probably important now. I, I, you're one of the few comedians I've seen that you've gotten uh, more blue as you've gone on, maybe. Maybe blue is not the right word, but you've pushed a limit more as you've gotten older, while a lot yeah. of people seem to calm down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. But I feel like yeah. I, I've I've been watching your stand up since like the early two thousands. So I've like seen your career progress and you you started off with observ- I mean it's always been observ- very observational, observational shit, stuff. Yeah. But now it's like like and you you talked about race and stuff a little bit there in politics, but you really started getting hard on some of that stuff after a while and yeah. just making really not mean spirited but pointed jokes that are fucking funny. Yeah, like, it's well I funny. told my wife I uh, I'm like twenty th- Two years in, it'll be 23 years soon. And I said, I finally feel like the last three years, like this newest hour I'm going to do is the best hour I've ever mm-hmm. done. It's the best fucking material I've ever put together. It's really smart. It's like well written. I've had, I've gone out to other friends and said, hey, can you help me mm-hmm. tweak or think about this? And I, I've been working with Argus Hamilton, a, a comedy store legend on the monologue jokes. He's fucking brilliant. So it's, it's this great hour. And even like my crowd work now, I just, like something's clicking and I finally became, I believe, a great comic. And I think when this new hour comes out, it'll exhibit that and exemplify that. And aesthetically and visually, it'll look different than anything any comic's ever done. And I fucking don't want to do it anymore, which is like the tragedy of, of it all. I finally got to the point where I'm like, this is great. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm hitting on all cylinders. And I fucking like loathe packing my bag, getting to the airport, going to another club across the country. I... It, it's weird. I never thought that this would happen to me, but I, it's like I want to film this next hour and, and really just step away from stand-up. Do you feel any pressure? No shit. Do you feel any pressure yeah. uh, with uh, the way society's going and how comedy's turned a little softer well, it's not, to it's, keep doing it, maybe? It's, like, it's definitely like society, but it's also like there's this faction of comics that are fucking indoor cats that are softies yeah. that are well, fucking the, ruining it, too. And it's like you can't... You can't dictate like the Beatles never told like insane clown posse. You can't do that, right. and you're getting that from like guys like Apatow, yeah, who, fuck him, who are like the Get the comedy. It was over the, by it's the like, way, fuck. I remember I remember that article. It was over the Louis C.K. bit about uh, Parkland. Um, yeah, it, yeah, but uh, uh, that I mean. That's what's going to happen when you go to see Louis. Yes, you know? yeah, correct. When you're going to see Pete Holmes, yeah, you're not going to get that. 
Yeah. So or don't Brian expect Regan. That. No, it's going to be yeah, but no one should dictate who and yeah. who should not get to no. say things. So exactly. I think no. that I agree. He's in the industry and so embedded for so long that he feels empowered to say those things. And I, it just like get the fuck. The last person in the world that should say that to another comic is another comic. Right. Yeah. Never. Well, I mean, go back and watch some of the movies he did in the early 2000s and the jokes that are written in there. Like, come on, man. You can't, you can't talk to anybody about anything at this point. What I think what happens is you have kids, you know, you, you, like he's on. He's, by the way, he's completely changed. Like once Trump got elected, go to his Twitter. It yeah, looks fuck. like fucking Russell Crowe in, in the garage in a beautiful mind with, with <laughs> shit up about Trump where he's just like, yeah. um, okay, um, he, like he's losing his mind. And it's like, look, a president is never going to fight. It changed your life personally. Yeah. In a million years, if, if a president changes your life on, on a day-to-day basis, yeah. it's really fucked up no, in he's, your own life. He's like, rich. No, like anybody can be president. It's not going to affect his life. But it's also like in Hollywood, and I think you probably can attest to this, like once like Sarah Silverman tweets like, Trump's a fucking piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, they're all jumping the bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah. This is what's going to get me the likes. This is what's going to get me the retweets. I got to do what they're doing. And it's just like it becomes just this incestual mindset that I, I, I just it's like, guys, why can't you just write a joke? Yeah. Write something remember, that's remember smart what you and used funny. To do? Yeah. Like, and, and then fuck the, off. Nobody gives a fuck. Make fun of Trump all you want. There's smart and funny ways to do it. Like you do it all the time. I, but I'm he, trying but, to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but here's the thing is like inside that bubble in L.A. Yeah. Right. You do those jokes and like everybody at the party is like, oh, way to go. Proud yeah. of you, read your tweet this morning. <laughs> you fucking, you really got them then. Yeah. The problem is when you're going to play a show in Kansas right. or Tennessee or whatever, and they're like, cool, man, I'm not going to buy a fucking ticket to come see yeah. your bullshit that you're on Twitter with, where it's just like, all right, fine. But they're rich enough where it doesn't matter. Exactly. Where the new comics, like, dude, it matters. But there is like a woke generation that, there, you know, this new generation of kids they're going to dictate what the new wave of comedy is and i don't know what it is i can just dictate what my version of comedy is and and do the best version i can but like you know a guy like owen benjamin who gets a lot of flack he's banned by the way on everything everything and i was talking to somebody recently about him and i look i haven't talked to owen for a few years um but it's like there's a part of me and i got shit for saying this before too i think uh, we were talking about him on pardo where you know, there's a part of me that does respect the fact that here's somebody with a different mindset, a different mentality, but he's going out there and saying what he wants that is his truth, right? Mm -hmm. So if Amy Schumer is going to have her truth and she goes to New York and she goes to San Francisco and she goes to Los Angeles and you're in pinstripes and you're in Yankee Stadium and you're playing for a hometown yeah, no crowd, shit, right? well, yeah, they're all going to applaud for yeah. you. But the difference is, is that no one's going to let Amy Schumer lose a gig because of her outspoken opinion. Right. But like when Owen is in a Red Sox uniform and he comes in and, and, and he's going around, it's like, oh, fuck this guy. He's got to be. So the th my rationale with Owen is like there's a part of me that respects the fact that he actually does have something to lose. Mm -hmm. And he's still going out there and saying what he wants and is his own truth. Now, I don't necessarily agree with his truth. There's a lot of things he says that I'm like, D I can't fucking get on board with you on this. But I do respect the fact that he's like, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say as much as I want, as much as these other comics are saying it. The difference is they're being rewarded and he's being vilified for it. And there are some things that I understand why he's being vilified for it. But he's understanding that you know, his mindset is actually costing him and his family, which I think is like the travesty of it all because as much as like everybody in Hollywood's like, we got to accept everybody. We love diversity. Yeah. Well, you don't like it when somebody is wearing a red hat. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah, shit. Yeah, right? exactly. No shit. Uh, with you not wanting to do stand-up anymore, is it because you have children and a family now where you're like, man, I don't want to miss these precious years with my kids? It's part, that's part of it, but I'm also burnt out on it. Like, I'm absolutely fucking zapped. And I feel that... I feel like the landscape of stand-up has changed so much in the last two to three years with all these Netflix specials. Yes. All these specials. I mean, every week there's another comic going, I'm working on my new hour. Come see. It's like, I mean, yeah, I get it. You got to stay relevant. You got to keep pumping out the material. But all these hour specials are having less and less of a lasting effect. Yeah, yeah. Whereas sure. you used to be able to do an hour special 
and then tour off of that for two years. Mm. And it's like now you put out a Netflix special. It's yeah. like it's getting lost in someone else is g- going to release one next week. Yeah. Yeah. They just keep pumping them out. So the relevance and, st- and sustaining power is The only gone. guy I've ever seen do it rapidly for a long period of time like that was Carlin. He had a new special like every other yeah. year. For, and it was great, What, though. like 20 it was years? Great. But he was great. It, but that's an anomaly. Like, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't not, happen very often. Plus, so, he was all yeah. doped up that whole time, too. There's a lot of people that Netflix are pumping right now where they're like, hey, man, the first one did well. Come back and do another oh, one. Oh, God. And you know the money's there. Some yeah. managers are pushing them. Hey, just sure. give us another special. I'm not going to say who it is, Eliza Schlesinger. But, um, <laughs> you know, you start getting into that territory where I like her. She's yeah. awesome, yeah. She's, She's awesome. Shit, yeah. But, like, I could tell there was a couple in there that were forced that There's you were like, oh, oh It's always going to be like that. And you don't want to miss out on that money. You don't want to miss out on that money. It's like, you know, I, I get it from that standpoint, from the comic standpoint, because... Back in the day, and you can probably attest this, when you yeah. started, back in the day, it was hard as fuck to get a, a one hour on something, you know? It's very difficult, Now yeah. they need so much content, all these streaming channels, that it's like, great, if it's not Netflix, Showtime, HBO, mm, yeah. just give it a fucking hour. Are you under that pressure, too, where it's just like, man, I want to no. shoot this out? Is, is this, where is this hour going? Do you know yet? I don't know yet, because I, gotta, I, I, I have this feature film that I got to get finished. And once that's done, I can concentrate more on the hour. But I was talking to Neil Brennan recently, and Neil Brennan's like, um, you know, he, he's somebody who's very honest and just shoots from the hip, and he's one of those friends you're like, oh, I can go to him for the He'll tell me the truth. One of the creators of Chappelle's show for the yeah, audience. Great guy. Yeah, great yeah. Netflix special very as well funny. he has. Um, but he said, do not feel the need to like do one in another two years, which I always did one every two to three years. I never was like, a year and this next one I took four years in between and he said it's got to be fucking undeniably great or don't do it at all and I was like you're right so I've kept fine-tuning 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 and that's why you know I, I said that earlier to my wife about like I this is fucking this is I actually believe in this one this one's great the other ones I was, was like this is good this is fun there's some good there's some there, I always looked at them as like albums there's some great singles on here mm-hmm. and then there's some like besides you gotta yeah, trudge yeah. through and yeah, listen yeah. to the next one you know but um, well, we'll see tonight uh, we'll, we'll see yeah <laughs> we'll be heckling so it's you know that'll give you some time to I work get, on your crowd Dan, so. yeah Dan, Dan gets real drunk no, um, and it, he'll, he usually stands up at, at a lot of you do Dan, take my shirt off I'm in the military respect <laughs> me respect me tell me about me a drink <laughs> yeah yeah Real, you're gonna respect me you wouldn't yeah. even hear my voice I don't think I'm too quiet no you are you, de- you definitely we, awesome. we have to turn this up to a 10 yeah um, <laughs> you've opened up for a lot of musicians yeah <laughs> I want to yeah. ask about Kanye West is that is that real did you hear by the game? way yeah. did you hear Kanye West offered someone Danny McBride oh my god so dude. He, he asked that Danny McBride play him in a biopic which is fucking awesome <laughs> um and I love as he should do it as that's why powers. I'm leading with this so I was right right before we came on I was at the gym earlier and I'm listening to this interview and I'm like yo this, this can't be fucking real he he called Danny McBride and said hey man it's Kanye and it's like Wes, you know, Danny McBride's yeah. like, yo, what? Well, there's only one Kanye. Who else would it be? Well, it, Danny McBride was like, this is, you're fucking with me. He's like, no, it's real. And he goes, hey, man, I want to, I want you to, I'm thinking about doing this biopic about my life. I want you to play me. That'd be the greatest film I know. ever. And, and oh, so my God, dude. He goes, yeah, look, can we meet? And he goes, yeah, but he goes, because uh, Danny's got a similar story to me. I, like, he, he lives in Charleston. Yeah. So he, was, he got the fuck out of there with kids. So that's why I, I lived here. I got the fuck out of there with kids. Right. Um, and he goes, uh, yeah, man, but I live in Charleston. And he said there was a long pause, and Kanye was like, I can come to Charleston. So he flies out and, yeah. and comes and pitches this movie, and Danny said he would do it. No, oh really? my God. Yes. Oh Please God, let yes. this happen. So they, great. they don't know, Jesus but Christ. like this is one of many Kanye stories yeah. of friends that I've heard about. And I'm curious, because when I read that on yours, I was like, do you have a fucked up Kanye story where it was just like, because he loves comedians. Yeah, Love I don't have like a personal interaction. We did last call with Carson Daly together. That's how long ago this was. And it was his first album. It hadn't come out yet. So everybody's like, oh, there was like this buzz about this guy. And he went up and did a song. I did my stand-up. And that was kind of it. And the next week I got a call saying, will you open for him at a SUNY school, a State University of New York? And mm-hmm. I was like, well, yeah, of course. Which yeah. one, Binghamton? I forget. It's, uh, it was one of them. It's the They're one, one the I same. know. 
Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to throw that out. You'd yeah. be like, yeah, man, how the fuck do you know about that? It was Oniata probably. Oniata probably. Oniata probably. But we go, and the show starts at 8, so I had done, like, BET's Comic View, so I was ready for this audience, quote, unquote. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to stop you right there. That was one of your first specials, Oh, you did the Black Entertainment Network. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll put it we'll put it this way. I was performing for a lot of Democrats that evening. Is that, <laughs> ah, is that, there you go. Is that, okay, so I go up, I do my set, fun, great, fifteen out, and I come off stage like, yeah, Kanye's not here. Would you uh, would you mind going up and do another ten? I'm like, uh, okay. So I go up, do another ten, uh, surviving, treading water. Right. I come off stage like, he's still not here. Would you go up and do another set? I'm like. I fucking guess so. So I go do out. You, wait, do you have that much material? That no, that's not how, no, <laughs> that's really like, how comedy works. Where are you guy. from? <laughs> what are you studying? I mean, I'm doing crowd work and they're getting antsy and they're not liking me. And I'm not liking the fact that I'm back out there. So I do my five minutes. I come off stage and they look at me and they're like, he's still not. I'm like, fuck off. I am not fucking going on that stage again. No fucking way. This is on you guys. So I ended up leaving that night. And my agent, I called the next day. I was like, did you hear about the gig? And he, they go, yeah, he showed up. The show started at 8, right? He mm -hmm. showed up at 10.30. He did two songs, and he took his check and ran. No that way. Yeah. So is it. Wow. That's all I, all I know. Not surprised. Opening up for musicians, that. though, I, like, like I would imagine, because, again, that was one of the, my sweet Wikipedia reads about you that I read. Yeah. Um, that, I, that I retained. The rest of it was all. <laughs> it's burning the hard drive. Yeah, yeah, it was all gone. I did Mariah Carey once. For for a summer, I did the charm bracelet the whole summer. tour. You guys remember the charm bracelet oh, tour? Oh yeah. yeah, I wore the charm Big bracelet fan. in honor so of the fucking she tour. Went back in the day, let's face it, I think we'd all fuck Mariah. Like I'd fuck her now. I, yeah, I would same. I would. Well, yeah. she got lap band too. I don't care so what she, she slimmed has. up. Yeah, I have a and shot it, now. Is what I would think. What's up? I'd have oh, a yeah, shot yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, for old sure. Mariah would be yeah. Like, yeah. Man, maybe I is she still with Nick Cannon or whatever the fuck? Uh, yeah. Well, no, they they so they split up, but they got a couple kids. Here's the thing about Nick Cannon, like very limited on talent. That guy, right? He had no choice but to not pull out and go, get the Mariah money because it's not his money. Would you that, fuck yeah, Oprah? Mariah's money. What's that? Would you fuck Oprah? Oh, like the, you're you're married. You have two kids, but you have the, the Oprah money. If you had the opportunity I, to I get fuck Oprah her with pregnant. the colored purple plane in the background, <laughs> yeah, I'm, go, I'm yes, I'm good on that. Not pull out in the whole thing. Same with Mariah. Like everybody's got one person in their life where they're like, eh, I'm not pulling out. That's hashtag, too much money. Hashtag trap Oprah. That's I'm, that's going to be my new campaign. Good luck with that. Oh, I'm doing it. Gail's the only one that could trap Oprah. <laughs> um, <laughs> ruining careers right on the show. Um, <laughs> no, but Mariah, how, what is that like? That's got to be. It was it was Nuts. bad. I, I'll never forget was the worst Hill? one was Red Rock Amphitheater in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, known for its acoustics, right? And I finally get to go there. I'm like, oh, it's fucking great. Even as a performer, as a comic, I'm I'm here. This is great <laughs> with Mariah Carey. So I go out, I do my set, and I'm doing okay, mm -hmm. like okay. And again, it's the acoustics, and you can't see anybody because it's not a club. It's just a mass of people, and so I I'm setting up this joke. And just way in the fucking back, like it must have been top row, like section Z. You just hear this fucking gay guy go, where's Mariah? <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Get this, <laughs> get, get like this Mexican guy and, out of here. <laughs> yeah. like, All right. I think that'll do it for me, guys. <laughs> where's Mariah? <Yeah. laughs> it was me. But my great, <laughs> this, I wasn't at this gig, but my buddy Ruben Paul, um, he saw a, a show at Screech. Mm. And Screech was doing stand up for a while. From Saved by the Bell? From yeah. Saved by the Bell, yeah. Dustin, Dustin was Dustin yeah. Yeah. Was This was after the porno he released with the two girls. Oof. And he's performing in front of like a thousand people at this college, university, whatever. And, and he's setting up his joke. And like maybe like the first five minutes, people are like, fuck it, Screech, yay. And then slowly the reality of like, oh, he's not a great comic is starting to settle in. <laughs> and so Screech is setting up this joke. And my buddy Ruben says, you just hear this dude way off in the fucking distance go, fuck you, Screech. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it always makes me laugh. Every time I'm bombing, I just hear that. Oh, fuck you, Screech. Fuck, fuck you, you, Screech. In my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get a lot of fuck you, Anne Frank. Yeah. Uh, every time I'm I don't, up, know why. I don't know why. People are so against. I feel bad for Anne Frank. Well, we're Francophiles. 
uh, both you and I were. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, I we feel love, bad for she. Frank. They stole her diary and made it literature. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. How can you not feel bad for her? Uh, I know. Well, she's never saw those residuals, right? I know. Fuck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Yep. Boom. Screech, uh, no, he's one of those guys where uh, somebody else said this. So the, the fame wears off yeah. after like four or five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then if you're not funny, because there's a lot of comics or famous sure. people. That want to be comics, yeah. Judd Apatow is one of them, let's face it. Yeah. Um, he's doing a lot of stand-up now for whatever fucking reason. I not, don't understand. Not a lot of people from other areas like writers, directors, or athletes even have tried a lot. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head is Brendan Schaub that's actually been successful. At stand up, coming from a totally different thing. Like well, he's, he's ha- yeah, he did it. He just did a one hour on Showtime. Yeah, right. Um, that's another. That's that'll probably take us to the another thing of. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to say it. Neither are you. But we know we know what we're both thinking on this one. Well, <laughs> podcast hosts transitioning into stand up because that's eating up a lot of comedy clubs right now, and they're trying to book everybody out. Right? Sure, because sure. Because they bring their own audience. Correct. Yeah. And we do, Makes sense. we've been booked out everywhere, but we do live shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're, they're, I'll come out and do maybe 10 or 15 and that's about it. Yeah. Um, and then we do a show, but it's our show and it's drinking bros and, and all of us are there. We're Carnival booked us out for a cruise. Yep. Oh, which we're great. doing in September. Yeah. Um, but it's the show itself, right? Right. Nobody's pretending to be a full-time stand-up comedian anymore. Right. That, I that, used to back is, in the day. It's but hard like, work, man. It, it is hard work. And you, like you said, you have to put in the work. I'm yeah. nowhere fucking near that or even thought about that, right? Sure. When you see a lot of podcast hosts, though, today, yep. they think that they can just roll into comedy clubs and be like, guess what? Everybody loves my podcast. I'm yeah. going to do a half hour or, or even 15 minutes is hard. Yeah, but look, I totally understand if you have the opportunity to make a few bucks and capitalize off, off the success of mm-hmm. what you're doing, then why not go for it? You know, I mean, like somebody, you know, everybody gets into it for different reasons. So, I mean, if you're in it, tried and true for the long haul, eventually everybody kind of gets to know each other. And yeah. it's such a community. It really is kind of like, a nice communal vibe yeah, yeah. with I'd say 99% of comics. So, I mean, yeah, if you're salmon swimming upstream. You'll end up with everybody else. And have you ever been bumped by YouTubers or podcasters where you're like, come on, get the fuck out of here with this shit. Uh, no, not really. I, I always work at the store in the improv. Um, and those are kind of set in stone, those lineups. Yeah. And then when I'm on the road, if somebody wanted to come in and do time, even if like, like somebody was like, I, I do it kind of often. I'd be like, go up and do time. I don't give a shit. Yeah. So I, I'm totally fine with guest sets. I, I don't take that as like, you know, like my ego's bruised or anything. Do you really think at this point with uh, digital media, YouTube and shit like that, that you really need to travel the whole country doing stand up? Like, could you just do rooms in, yes. in, in, in California near your home? And I, I think yes. And I'll set? tell you why. And you can back this up. Okay. Is California jokes. Like, California's fucked as a state, right? California is the same 45% Republican and Libertarian. Though. I understand that, but the people who are going to comedy clubs, it's mm-hmm. the same yeah. people. And those jokes won't land in middle America and the red states. Yeah. So I think you're going out on the road and all this shit, even coming to Wilmington, North Carolina, yeah. you have to, right? Yeah, I mean, look, if that's your goal, like if you want to be Bill Maher, then you know where you're going to kill it and you know who's going to come to your show. Right. But if you're... You know, somebody like me who's familiar but not famous, and there's probably more. You know, I'd say I'm probably 50 50. There's people coming to see me, and there's people that are coming to a show, right? And I right. happen to be the comic. So, knowing that, like, that's why, like, the hour I put together, and it's also like me, my mentality, like, I want everybody to come to show, I want everybody to have fun. I'm not there to like bang the drum like fuck Trump. I'm not there to bang a Hillary drum or any of those. Now you do a, you do you a will bit, see yeah. a lot of comics doing that for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, he, you do a great bit on that. Uh, like I'm white, I'm black, I'm gay, I'm straight. This whole thing, but in the end, I'm just an American. That's yeah. like that's like his whole been his whole shtick forever. But you're not kind of so. But I'm not gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll not see. gay, not really American. Which was like, the we'll punchline see. at the end of the night. Yeah, yeah, we'll see at the end of the night, obviously. Uh, Anthony might try to... Hi, boys. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah. Where's, Where's Mariah? Mariah? <laughs> More fingers. <laughs> um, on a night like tonight, yeah. right? You go in, no hopes, no nothing. What's the... I'll tell you my pro like I've literally fallen asleep on the green room couch and people are kicking me going you're fucking up 
Like no shit. I I've been at the bar, and people are like, they're calling you. Like I just once I get on stage, yeah, I I know what I have to work on. Mm-hmm. I know the new jokes. I know where to implement them, and then I know like I like to fuck off. I like to do crowd work and get like reset the page and get everybody on on page with me, you know, right, but yeah. I, I don't really have, I'm just like, yeah, once, once I go on stage, it's like, all right, I'm working. And once I come off, I'm like, I'm done. It's very Mariano Rivera, by the way. He used to sleep in the bullpen. And her Sandman. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I'm yeah. very relaxed. Hall I don't famer. Yeah. 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 Uh, you went to Kent state too, right? Yeah. I went to Ohio state. You went to Ohio state. I did. Yeah. Um, big fan of, of the state of Ohio. Do you perform there a lot? Uh, yeah. Cause yeah. that's, that is truly middle America. The heart oh, of yeah. the heart of it all. I would figure because a lot of comics go there, mm-hmm. and in particular Cleveland for some reason. I well, go to Cleveland's Cleveland got a, a great club. It's called Hilarities. The guy Nick is old school. He's one of the he's one of the nicest owners of a comedy club in uh, all in the whole country. And because he treats comics so well, it's kind of like that Vegas mob mentality of like, I got your dinner. What do you need? Let me take care of you. Yeah. You know, you got a friend. Come, I'll get you a hotel room for your friend. He's just so classy. Whereas yeah. sometimes you go to these clubs and they nickel and dime you. Comics get 50% off drinks. You can order from the left side of the menu. Nick's great. I think that's why a lot of people go to Cleveland. Uh, yeah. But I love Columbus Funny Bone. It's one of the best yeah. clubs. Um, and Ohio State. Is it Mean Mr. Mustard? Is that bar still there? It's gone, yeah. Yeah, that was... That, that's that was the f- jam back in the day. Ooh, I got crocked there. I got fucking... Because nobody ever came to... Kent. We all went to Ohio State yeah. to go get bombed. To rage, yeah. Yeah, and it, I've had a lot of great memories at OSU. Well, yeah. you've probably lost some memories there, too. I've lost some uh, memories there, too. Yeah, a lot of, sure, lot, yeah, you, can, you can lose a lot of things there. Uh, Dan, as a... He's a train killer. He's killed hundreds of people in the <laughs> yes. military. Um, Kent State, the guy do a good job or not? Which guy? The guy that shot <laughs> unarmed <laughs> civilians? See, we're doing a quick look back. Uh, yeah. How was his aim back then? Uh, oh, no, man. He broke down the Vegas shooting for me. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, we're he... not going to get into that now. <laughs> okay. It just will take too long, and I get excited, so it's like... Okay. Yeah. Whenever you talk about killing with Dan and guns, yeah. like it is off to the races with him. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just really clinical. It's a job, dude. Like yes. anything else, it's yeah. fine. Well, just like, look, OJ's looking for the real killers out he there. He is, yeah, and I'm helping. Yeah. So if you're going to sit out stand-up, what do you want to do after that then? I'm sorry? If you're going to sit out stand-up, what do you want to do after that? It's not necessarily sitting it out. I just want to take a break for – it's been 23 straight years of doing it. I've never had a break. It's 45 weeks a year. So I just wrote and directed a, f- uh, a feature film about my early years in stand-up, and Vince Vaughn produced that, and that's going to come out in early 2020. I just did – a documentary about the amazing Jonathan that's on YouTube. Yeah, I saw that. For free. It's fucking so everybody crazy. can see that if you want to check that out. Crazy story. I, you know but, him. So, I, yeah, I love Amazing Jonathan. Yeah. When I moved to L.A., he was in my first acting class there. Oh, um, shit, really? Yeah, when I because I, I went to NYU after Ohio State. And I, I've been to Vegas before a bunch right. of times. So I'd seen him, yeah, obviously. At the Nugget. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he yeah. always killed it out of control or whatever. And so I leaned over to him and I was like, hey, man, are you the Amazing Jonathan? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I am. And I was like the fuck are you doing here? And he yeah. goes, I'm going to kill myself if I'm in Vegas anymore. And I was That's like, part of the doc, oh, wow. too. Like, he was fucking going wild for a long time. Oh, Drugs. Yeah. Hard. I mean, he was going and he was already really, pretty, really, like, really fucking hard. He, his genetics weren't great to begin with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like the no. eat, like guy diabetes and shit like that. Yeah. He's how, not a how, how close of friends are you with him that you did the documentary? Quite, quite friendly, yeah. I mean, definitely friends with him, but more so Joel Osborne. Joel's like one of my best friends I would okay. consider him and so the second time I was ever on the road um the first weekend it, it was at Charlie Goodnights the first week was Brian Regan and the second week was the amazing Jonathan back to back that's great so I worked with Jonathan got along really well and got to know Joel extremely well because we were trading Oasis bootlegs actually at the time on CD uh, there it is. recording uh, our bootlegs and stuff and then uh every time I came out to LA I'd just crash at Jonathan's place and hang out with him and Joel, and then every time I went to Vegas, I got to know those guys and stayed, stayed with them and stuff, and they got me rooms to see the show. And so for years, I got to know these guys. Joel would always see me when he's in the States, and Jonathan, basically, I was a fan and a friend when he was given the terminal diagnosis, retiring. I felt for him, just like anybody else would. And then when he said, uh, I outlived expectations by two or three years, I'm going to see if I can still do this, and made a return to the stage, I thought, someone should document that. Fuck it, I'll document it. I called him up. I'd never done a film before, never done a documentary, and we did it. And it, the great thing is that he befriended Joel Osborne at the age of 12, as you know, you saw this, and kind of took Joel under his wing. Joel eventually 
becomes a comedian in his own right and came back to open for Jonathan. So the whole film kind of came full circle. So it kind of played at itself out in my head. And I just said, this is pretty cool. So we uploaded on YouTube with Bill Burr. I got to talk to him and Al Magical with All Things Comedy. We put it up on YouTube for free so anybody yeah. can watch it. So and it's on All Things Comedy's YouTube then for the yeah, audience. Yeah, you just literally go to YouTube, type in Always Amazing. It pops up and... In like a month, it's had 450,000 views yeah. and 16,000 likes, 100 dislikes. It's like I've never seen like that much positivity on, on YouTube, especially where people are paying homage and talking yeah. to Jonathan. Comment. YouTube's a weird nice. place. Yeah. Very, yeah. It's and like there's a car, there's a race car video and somebody's like, fucking Puerto Ricans. Like, whoa. This <laughs> yeah. no, Nothing to no do with Puerto, Puerto Ricans. Rican. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? Go back to Tokyo. <laughs> drift somewhere else. And you're like, whoa, I was not, I'm not even drifting in this video. I've never seen Fast and Furious. I think the thing with Amazing Jonathan is though, like, as far as like prop comedians, right? Yeah. You get him and Carrot Top. Sure. Everybody loved, I, like, I've never heard a bad word about Amazing Jonathan, right? Carrot yeah. Top was always a punchline for things, whereas Amazing Jonathan, I was just like, man, this is crazy but he was, fuck. He's so funny. Yeah, but and it was magic, and it was fast-paced, and yeah. like, you believed he was that guy that he was portraying yeah. on And he stage. is. I mean, he's literally doing the cocaine as he looks like he's doing cocaine. It's like he's doing cocaine. Yeah. yeah. But Jonathan had like a different demeanor. He was like rock star. He had blood. Mm -hmm. He was a little dark. Carrot Top's just a fun guy, and it's so funny because like people shit on that guy. It's always from the alt community. The yeah. alternative comics, right. like, you know, uh, David Cross is shitting on Carrot Top. But it's like 99% of comics, like, that dude's one of the nicest guys in the world. Like, right. everybody that goes to Vegas goes to see his show, and they go, it's fucking funny. And then they fucking hang with him. They're like, he's the nicest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've heard nothing but shitty things about David Cross. Right. So I think there's sometimes, like, this discord where, like, People will think like Anthony Bourdain's the coolest guy and Guy Fieri's a fucking dick. Yeah. And he's just like this Midwestern kind of like drip. But it's like, I'd rather hang with Guy Fieri than Anthony Bourdain. He seems like a more fun guy and he eats like a fucking eighth grader, which I love. So I'd rather chill out with him. And same thing like Larry Cable guy. He got shit on for years. It's like, do you think Larry the Cable guy gives a flying fuck? what David Cross or any of these guys at the Luna Lounge in New York City think about him as he's on his own fucking farm in a boat fishing. Yeah. And he's got it made. I don't know. Like, there's this alt side that, like, is very judgmental to people that are mainstream. But yeah. the mainstream people, they don't give a fuck about alt or, like, cool or no, hip. because no. they're rich. Coastal shit. Because exactly. they're fucking rich. They don't care. And let's face it, Bourdain would have been a rough hang anyways, like. Nailed it. Hello. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I'm with you because, like, I so we talk about Guy Fieri all the time. Like, we, we always want him on as a guest. And yeah. everybody thinks we're joking. And I yeah. was like, no, we fucking love Guy Fieri. Like, I went, I, so at the He Rio, looks like he's having the best time he of seems his like life a super every cool guy. day of his life. Cool I mean, he's, he's yes. look, he's kind of a D-bag, but so are we. We don't know. So are we. You don't fucking Why, know him, Dan, like he'd be a cool hang. By a D-bag, I mean a guy who wears visors and spikes his hair up. But who that's, cares? That's fine. That's Fieri, brother. Yeah. That's showbiz, it's, baby. That's who he is. That's fine. Come on, that's dude. Fieri. Yeah, that's Fieri. That's, that's Fieri classic zone. Fieri. Yeah. yeah. He'd take your fucking mom to Flavortown, dude. <laughs> he would. Yeah. Just, I wouldn't mind having Guy Fieri as a stepdad. No, you wouldn't at all. You'd no. get to go and, and eat free at all his breath. Exactly. Maybe half yeah. off. Have Maybe a po' boy off, sandwich yeah. out of a fucking gas station. We, like. were, <laughs> we were at the comedy cellar at the Rio in Las Vegas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of comics were like, well, let's just go to Guy Fieri's restaurant. Like, mm -hmm. it'll be funny, right? And we go, dude, we ate there the next four days because it was fucking great. The best. It was yeah. great. Yeah. You know where you're not eating, Dan? Is it? Anthony Bourdain's house exactly he's fucking because he's fucking dead. He's, dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's got nothing to serve at his house. Yeah, exactly. There's a fucking belt on the door. That's all he's serving there. Uh, Fieri, though, I want to I want to rage with Fieri. Guy Fieri's never going to kill himself. You can I, I will. He's bet, living his best life. I'll bet all of my money that I have that Guy Fieri never kills himself. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Because he's living his best life. He's yeah. enjoying all of his shit. And like, there's comics like that. Like We're when like, you lift an oven range out and you're cleaning it, and you lift the oven range out and you see cockroaches, like Fieri will be sitting there with the cockroaches, just hanging out. Like hundred yeah. percent human cockroach. He's, he's like, hey, Frank Gore. What's up, guys? <laughs> Frank yeah. Gore, the the football player for the for Colts. the 49ers and Colts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's still playing. Yeah. and I'll probably still draft him in the in the last round of fantasy this year. <laughs> um, and then Keith Richards, and it's it's those guys, and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, I just saw the Stones like a week and a half ago. Amazing still? Still. Yeah. Still fucking amazing. Unreal. Meanwhile, Steven Tyler's 
fucking up. Oh, he, that was the worst. We saw him uh, at the Super Bowl. Oh, was terrible. man. Like, they had to turn the gains up on his voice so high that it was oh, pitched oh. over the music or over the instruments. I'm Killed like, us all yeah, night long. Damn, like, we just heard Post Malone. You got to get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we bounced on that. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, <laughs> it was rough. What, what else do you want to do in this life? Because you've, look, you've directed movies now. You've done stand up for fucking 23 years. Like, yeah. What else is there? Do you out want to there? murder somebody? You had your own show on fun. CBS? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I did that. You, you're kind of, you've ticked off the life boxes here. Where else do you go? Stand up. I, look, I really, I just want to, I want to do this film. I want to, you know, I have two more films coming up after this that I'm going to do. And then I think, like, I'm going to go to Nashville and buy a fucking nice house and chill out with my family Smart. so I can yes. raise my kids. Yes. In like, I don't want my kids to know what blow is in fifth grade because I know it's going to happen in exactly, Los Angeles. This is the same joke I said on this show. Yeah, okay, yeah. Four years of, of like, dude. I, I moved out of there. I don't want them doing blow in fourth grade. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. That's the way I feel. And yeah, I that's want more of a to... high school activity. Yeah. Nah. I don't know. LA's LA. a little accelerated. Not LA, no, I mean, yeah. worse, I mean I think, it but... should be a high school activity. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I meant to be, say. Yeah. Well, it should be. Save but that stuff LA. for your, yeah. you know, 14, just 15 like, years old. Lot, your dollar goes a lot further. I, I think California is just such a fucking, like, you know, government wise, it's a fucking oh my cesspool. God, it's a mess. Absolute mess. Financial mess. It's taxes. Where, where are you living at now there? Pasadena. Okay. That's the only place you can probably still get a house for under 700, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, hey. we bought a great house and, you know, even like what we pay in property taxes, like I still got to send my kids to a different school. You know who doesn't yeah. pay property taxes is Facebook, Google, and General Electric. So okay. good, good yeah, luck, they don't pay good luck paying your property taxes. That's good. No, <laughs> and that's, but that's yeah. California. Yeah, it of is. Course, yeah. Where it's yeah. just like, hey, we believe in everything else. And uh, yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Now, yeah. what, what, is, what is the end game for you guys, though? So, for me personally, yeah. we, like, did, you know, li lived in L.A. for fuck, man, 17, 18 years, right? Yeah. Did a fuck ton of movies, all that other sure. shit. And then I was the same way. So, when my wife got pregnant, I was like, hey, let's move. Mm -hmm. um, pick any city you want or whatever. And, uh, and I can always commute. I do a bunch of rewrites for, you know, bu big budget shit and everything yeah. else. And it, re it didn't really matter. I write books and, and everything else. Podcasts. Because uh, I met all these guys and we mm -hmm. started to do a podcast and then that exploded. We were one of the first, first ones in at that point. Right, right. Uh, you know, what was it, four and a half, five years ago, somewhere in there. Yeah, something like that. And um, so the fact that you could do a podcast from anywhere in the sure, world yeah. with your best friends. Because mm -hmm. people ask me this all the time. And they're like, I don't understand why you would want to stop doing movies or whatever. It's not that I want to stop doing movies. But if I get to work with my best friends every day, oh, live yeah. in a city that I love, because I hated L.A. Yeah. Like, it's, LA's a fucking What's shithole. Like? Uh, it's, it's the worst. Yeah. And people don't understand that until you're there. And I was like, if I can just live... And then when we were... Uh, my wife and I went on a 30-city press tour for a movie. And this is... I said, look, just pick a city. And we'll move there and get, get yeah. a house or whatever. And, uh, and then I'll commute and do all my shit. Because it doesn't really matter where you are. doesn't. For, what, for, this, for all yeah. of this stuff, right? So when we were here, ironically, um, do, did a radio show. Yeah. Had a beer afterwards, ran into Danny McBride, and he was living. And he <laughs> was like, "Yo, oh McBride, yeah, yeah." And I was like, "What the fuck?" And he was just like, "Hey, man, this is, it's amazing here, yeah. whatever." And I was like, "Awesome." And then he ended up move, moving down to Charleston, or whatever. And it was like, because he wanted to get out. And the same thing, sure. he had kids. Yeah, I, I had kids and and all that stuff. You have kids. Yeah, normal environment, normal everything. The difference was when I was there, you couldn't do this and and set your own schedule and and do whatever. You right, wanted. right. Because uh, it was all. Hey man, you got to be in LA and you got to be in front of these people and all this other shit. Yeah. Now the podcast world has become, look, if you look at the tree, I call it the tree of Rogan. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. If you look at the tree of Rogan of what they've created with your mom's house, Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, uh, cause Callen's a friend of mine, Brian Callen. Now Theo um, and Theo, Santino. Yeah, Theo. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you're going down this tree of Rogan, like it's become the cool crowd where it's like, Hey man, you don't necessarily need to do anything else other than that. Yeah. And you know, we get to talk about the most fucked up shit on the planet every day. Yeah. I could not do that in Los Angeles. Yeah. I can do that now mm -hmm. and it doesn't fucking matter. And I get to do it with my best and friends. It's self, it's self published. So you reach your own audience without yeah, having to go through any bullshit. So, yeah. I mean, that's like, it, as far as goals go, this, this, this is, is it. Yeah. We have a, we have a sports show on Wednesday. I know you're a huge sports guy and we'll get to that in a second, but yeah. um, we host a sports show. We get to go to every single event on the planet. Like, I mean, at the Super Bowl, we've been to twice. We've, you know, the Masters, like you yeah. name it. It's amazing. I don't know how life gets better than that. Yeah. And that's why it, 
it's rad. Because, um, I mean, look, you're a diehard Pittsburgh. Penguins, yeah. Steelers, all, all, all that shit, right? Yeah. We, we got to go to a Steelers game last year. Like, yeah, whatever the biggest game of the week is, we get to go to and cover it. And it's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. If you got to just hang out with the Steelers and all that shit, I mean, how? Of course. I mean, that's, that's the goal. And I think, like, like you were, I think, alluding to this earlier where – you don't need to be in LA anymore. You don't no. need, because Correct. everything is so fractured and fragmented that even getting a show, like if you got a show on CBS, it's mm -hmm. like five years ago, that'd be the shit, right? Now people be like, you sure you want to be on CBS? Shouldn't you be on streaming? And then if you're on stream, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. I think if you can find it, a source of revenue and this happens and you get to do it here, then why not? Because if you were in LA, does that make this show bigger? No. no. Yeah. It's still the no. same show. So why it's not? easier to get guests there, but we're not really a guest based show for the most part. We just do it when we it's like here. having guests. Yeah. We love it. And yeah, if it's but, a community we like, like, yeah. as soon, cause as soon as he saw you were here, he was like, yo, let's get him on the show. Yeah. 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 Fucking love him. He's a gigantic fan of yours. I am. I think you should still pick a race. I am um, really. Well, I pick a race. <laughs> like quit being both. Like <laughs> really just selfish. Pick one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just pick one. But Carlos but obviously, is German. Choose the one, choose the choose the white one. Yeah, but no, and that's rad. So like anybody who rolls through here, great. Uh, two of our co-hosts are in San Antonio. We do that through video. Yeah, nice. like Marlon Wayans was there yesterday. So yep. he was on the show yesterday, and it was yep. oh, that's great. It's great, and we can kind of set our own schedule when we yep. travel whenever we want, and, and it's great. I'm not on the road like you, 47 weeks out of the year, yeah. right. up. So. Um, that's fantastic, but uh, if you if you make the new the move to Nashville, yeah, you know, that'll be great. It, it'll be great for you and your family. Yeah, I talked stuff. to Nate Bargatze and Kathleen Madigan and Ralphie May before we passed. Yeah, yeah. And you know, my wife and I have been out there a bunch of times. I just like that there's some element of like show business out there, but I also just like the vibe. Like I I did this red carpet thing for the Country Music Awards mm -hmm. like three years ago, and like you're meeting all these musicians and. I'm not a big country music fan, but I know some of the names. And then they're all just kind of like bullshitting with you and hanging out. And one guy's like, yeah, take my number. Anytime you're in town, we'll, we'll go out. And I got like two artists like numbers. And yeah. Garth Brooks is coming up. He's like, hi, I'm Garth. I'm like, I fucking know who the fuck <laughs> you are. Yeah. Yeah. Why? He should not be allowed to introduce himself. Just say hi. That's all you need yeah. to say. Really. Here's the thing about Garth, though. He's a real motherfucker. Never yeah, bothered is. to lose weight. No, he doesn't care. Him and Tr then he marries Trisha Yearwood. Yeah, they both get fatter. Fatter because yeah. eating is awesome. Yeah, and yeah. it's being thin and staying camera ready. And he's also he's also got a big ranch where he and Trisha live, and then on the same compound, his ex wife and their kids live. So he's got the whole. How great is that? <laughs> you don't think he sneaks over in the middle of the night for a quick beach, like for the yeah. old times, where he's like, hey. I'm shameless. <laughs> and then just throw, lays his dick up there, and she's like, yeah, yeah. all right. Shameless as a man. Like, that's great. He's living his best life. But yeah. you can only do that in Nashville. Yeah. L.A., it's, I've got you on a ring camera outside the house. <laughs> I'm fucking sending it into TMZ. That's you were at so my fucking house trying to get a beach in the middle of the night. <laughs> Fuck you. And it's like, eh, come on, man. That's L.A. This is Nashville. Yeah. That's the difference. So, yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, thanks for being on the show. This is, yeah. the, this, is the, yeah. this is the part in the show. We do the Drinking Bro of the Week. Somebody that inspired you, uh, maybe helped you to get to, to where you needed to be today as a, as a comic um, or just as a human in life. Uh, who would you like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to? Drinking Bro of the Week, I would give to... You're not going to like this. Uh, uh, is it Hillary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does she know no. something about you? Yeah, I good. would say <laughs> Noel or Liam Gallagher from Oasis because every fucking city I've ever been to in my life, I finish my shows and then I find the nearest pub with a jukebox, mm -hmm. and I slip a 20 in, and you know I'm always doing the, the five extra credits to play next. I'm yeah. not waiting to hear anybody else's shit, and I'm just Oasis and the Killers all night, but Oasis first. Okay. So Love I was it. right. That's his rosebud. No, it's fine. It's how, been how long Oasis is your show tonight? I, I do like 50, 50 minutes. 50 minutes? Okay, yeah. cool. I'm excited. Yeah, at 51 minutes, I'm going to yeah. smash a Heineken on the floor and then walk the fuck out. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Classic Oasis. Classic. Yeah. Uh, Steve, man, it, it was a pleasure having yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate yeah, it. You're a great a fucking fun. dude, man. Thanks yeah. for stopping Thank by you. drinking, bro. You guys as well. And, and continued success to you guys as yeah, well. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. We appreciate it's it. It's yeah. nice to see you doing all this out of 
North Carolina. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Crazy. it's crazy. It's crazy. It gives you hope that you can work out of Tennessee sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, half of Hollywood has moved to Nashville. So when That's you true. go there, yeah. be prepared. You'll be like, oh, fuck. It, it, everybody's I can't wait. picking up. Yeah. 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 Uh, for Steve Byrne, uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.